Hello world and welcome to my channel. So I went to go into my sketchbook the other day, you know, to like sketch. So I went and I went and I got my sketchbook and guess what? It's completely full. Completely full. I had no idea. Usually I keep track of these things, but no. So right now I have no sketchbook. So I thought instead of buying a new sketchbook, we will make our very own sketchbook. I have done this in the past, but it has been a really long time. I have done this. So we will have to brush up on some skills and see if we can make a beautiful new sketchbook for me to fill up the pages. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Okay guys, so now it is time to say goodbye to my old sketchbook. We have been through a lot together, me and my sketchbook. I have no idea what this page is about. it for my sketchbook. Goodbye, old friend. You hold lots of memories, but it's time for me to move on and have a fresh start. Goodbye. Now it is time to make our brand new sketchbook. For my new sketchbook, I want it to be, you know, new, exciting, fresh. So let's get out some of the paper I want to use because I have been having a lot of fun with toned paper. So I'm thinking maybe I add some of that into my sketchbook. Mm -hmm. That could be really fun. So let me get out some paper. Okay, so as some of you may know, the most important part of the sketch is the paper. So I have this mixed media paper. It is very thick. It holds a lot of different mediums very well. I have used this before and I thought it would be good to make my sketchbook because I have a lot of different ones here. So I have this toned gray. I have this toned blue, which these two look very similar, but they're different. They're different enough. So I have some of those. I have some plain white sheets that we can just put in there in case I don't feel like, you know, doing toned paper at the moment. And then I also got, you may remember this from my black watercolor paper video, but I got some of this aqua cold pressed black, which that could be pretty fun to put into my sketchbook. So I have my paper picked out for the cover of my sketchbook. I want to use the back. I had just finished this watercolor paper pad and the back of this is a really nice and thick cardboard. So I thought I would use some of this for the cover and backing of my sketchbook. Now for the binding of my sketchbook, I want it to be a lot more flexible since I'm gonna open and close it a lot. So I'm gonna use a cereal box for that because that's just a thinner cardboard. So I think that would be nice. As for the decoration of the cover, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet, but we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. You know, it's gonna look cool. It's gonna look amazing. I can just feel it. So that is all of the materials materials I am going to be using for my sketchbook. So let's go ahead and let's move on to assembly. Okay, so the first thing I have to do for my sketchbook is figure out the size. So this is the smallest of the papers that I have picked out for my sketchbook. It is my black watercolor paper and I want to split each of these pages in half because I want to get two sheets of paper out of, out of one sheet of this. I'm going to tear out one of these black papers. Oh my gosh, this glue is strong. This is a struggle. Let me get out my paper cutter. We are going to cut this in half. Okay, so if I cut the paper in half and then I fold it in half again to create each of my little pages, this is how big my sketchbook is. Do I like that? I don't know. I just don't know. So I was figuring out the size of my sketchbook and first I cut the black watercolor paper in half but it was just too small. So I went ahead and I took one of the bigger sheets and I cut it in half and folded it and I liked that size a lot better. I think it looks pretty good. So we are going to go ahead and go with this size. This is four and a half by six. If you open it up it is a nine inch by six inch. So those are the dimensions for this sketchbook. I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting and folding all of these papers and then put them into signatures and then we can begin stitching our book together.
So I have finished poking all of the holes into my signatures as you can see. I did start out using that um, sewing pin. Then I remembered I had this tool, which is actually a needle felting tool that I got with my needle felting kit, and it worked out pretty good and it went a lot faster. The next step is to stitch these all together. So I'm going to decide on the order. I want to have it kind of in like a gradient order of the tone of paper, so I have it white to black. I think will look nice in the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a needle. You can use a regular sewing needle like this. I will be using a curved needle which I think makes it a little bit easier. So that's what I'm going to be using. I am going to go ahead and take some white the red, so I want it to be white. I could use black to get sleek. I changed my mind. I'm going to be using some black thread to sew my book together. I think that will look pretty spicy. For my black thread, I'm going to go ahead and unwind it, and I'm going to unroll it till it's about my arm span. I find that that is just enough and it doesn't get too tangled in itself. I'm going to go ahead and thread one end through my needle, just like that, and we're going to go ahead and bring the two ends together and we have it just like that. Then I'm gonna go ahead and tie the knot. Okay, so I have my signatures right here as you can see. I'm gonna go ahead and start with just the white one. I have my needle and thread right here. I'm gonna start on the outside and kind of thread through that very first hole I made. And we're gonna pull the string all the way through till our knot catches. So we're going to push our needle back through the second hole to the outside again. And then we're going to go ahead and go back through this other hole, going back and forth through these holes all the way down until we reach the end. Okay, so now that we've gotten to the very end, we are going to go ahead and thread back through this second hole right here. And we're basically going to be stitching back in the other direction. So we want to do that all the way down until we get to the very end. Okay, so now your stitch signature should look somewhat like this. So now our needle is on the inside of our signature. I'm going to go ahead and pull my needle underneath this first loop right here. And I'm going to pull it through this little loop created by my um, thread. I'm going to go ahead and pull on that and it will create a little knot. So once you've created that little knot, you want to go ahead and put your needle back through that hole and we're going to flip our signature around and you're going to just pull it and I can see my little knot that I made on the outside. So now that we have our first signature all stitched up and ready, we can go ahead and set our next signature on top, which is going to be this gray. We're going to have that directly on top of that and then we're going to take our needle and we're going to put it through that first hole on the top. I'm going to try to keep it somewhat tight. So they stay together. Then we're going to go ahead and pull our needle through the second hole here. Now here's where a curved needle comes in a bit handy. We are going to go ahead and take our needle and we're going to put it underneath that first line of string that we made. And we're going to go ahead and take it and we're going to do it around the second one as well. So it creates almost like a little loop under those first two stitches. And we're going to bring it around and pull. So once you have your string through those two stitches, you want to go ahead and pull it through that same exact hole. So we're going to pull it straight through that hole, back through our second hole. Pull it tight, and you want to continue doing that all the way down until you reach this point. Okay, so when you get to this last stitch here, you want to take your needle and you want to put it through this last loop right here. And instead of going back through this hole, you want to take your next signature. So for me, it's this blue gray and you want to put your needle through this hole. So you want to continue the process that you did for the second signature with the third signature and then you can keep on adding as many signatures as you wish. Mine I'm just going to have the four with the black layer on top but you can have more on your sketchbook or notebook or whatever you are making. And then once you are done adding all of your signatures you can just tie a knot and then you would be done.
Okay, so I finished stitching my book all together. We are going to go ahead and next glue the edge of the binding just so we can glue down all of these stray strings and to just make our binding a little bit stronger. So I have some binder clips. So we are going to put those on either end that just to help squish everything down. I have to make sure it's even too. We can do the other side. I got it on one side. Why is the second side so difficult? They're literally the same thing. What the heck? Okay, guys, my sister had to help me, but I finally got both binder clips on. They have like book binder glue and stuff. I'm using this Elmer's glue wall. So now that I have the glued, I'm just gonna let that dry. And then once that dry, I'll add another layer. And if I think I need the third layer, I'll add a third. But I think two layers will be fine. So while our binding is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the cover, which is the fun part because that's where all the decorative elements come in. So let's go ahead and do that now. So for the main part of my my cover I want to use this cardboard that's on the back of this just because it's really thick and sturdy for the binding area I want to use a cereal box because it's a bit more flexible and it will be easier to open and close okay so I'm gonna measure my text block so I measure the text blocks width um calculating guys so our width is four and a half four and that gives us five eight. our height is six inches why I calculated it is because we want a, a slight border around our entire book so I just added in those measurements so when we put it all together the cover will look nice. Okay so now that we calculated what the cover sh should measure I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. cutting out um, the pieces for my cover. Now that I have that all done, it is time to pick our cover material. Now this is where I'm struggling a little bit, okay? Since my um, book has some kind of like blacks, blue grays, I was thinking of making the cover kind of match and do a blue kind of theme. So I went ahead and I looked through my stuff and I was originally going to do some paper like this. I thought this pattern would look really pretty. You have it up against the colors that would look I think it would look pretty nice but then but then okay another another option I found some vinyl okay and I was thinking hmm the vinyl would be a lot stronger than the paper and then I have this vinyl but I also have this blue vinyl which is a little bit different than my other vinyl it has a bit more blues greens it's a lot darker than this which this looks cool too I'm kind of really liking that so these are the options. I'm trying to decide which one I like best. I'm kind of leaning towards the vinyl options because it would be stronger. I think I'm going to go with the vinyl. Kind of leaning towards the dark blue. After a long debating with myself, an internal battle, I have decided on this dark blue vinyl for the cover material. You know what I was thinking is that maybe once I have the vinyl kind of attached to the covers, I could put some like kind of gold um, foil embellishments because I have the foil quill and I'm pretty sure that works on the vinyl. That would be extra cool. I could do like some cool design, maybe some like stars and galaxies type stuff I think that would look really cool but first let me get this cover area kind of attached onto this vinyl Okay guys, so I wanted to do some kind of a foil design on my cover just to give it a little bit more pizzazz. So this is the cover design that I decided to go for. It is very similar to like my YouTube banner and branding, so I thought it would be pretty cool to just, you know, have a sketchbook with that on it. So I did some clouds, a cute little cat, and then some stars and a moon. This is going to go on the front and the back of the cover, so it's going to be like one continuous design across my book. I've already sized it to shape so we are going to go ahead and make it and hopefully it will turn out good. Oh no, I think I already messed up. It kind of didn't go so well and I'm really scared. Oh, whoa. Oh man, I'm 
so upset at myself. I forgot to move those things and this is what happened. Ooh. Oh man, it would have turned out so good. Oh. So this is what the cover would have looked like. I think it turned out so good. But the problem is, is that I forgot to move these things off the side because you can move them. And they made these little marks into the middle of the thing. See? I'm so upset. What I'm going to do now is I've decided to redo the cover. Since it has the this big sort of perforation on the front, I'm just going to redo it because that would be annoying. And I spent all this time and effort on this project. I want it to look good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the vinyl off of this card board and hope to salvage it. So I'm going to carefully remove the vinyl, reapply a new layer of vinyl, and try to do the silver embellishment. So I'll do that and then I'll get back to you to show you how it went. So our cover is now pretty much completed, so we are going to go ahead and set that off to the side and now work on our text block. Now, the next thing we are going to do to make this book nice and pretty is add some end pages, so just to the back and the front, just to give the book a cleaner look and to hide the rest of the cardboard on our cover. I debated a lot over what um, paper ch I should use, and I've decided just to go with a simple um, glittery white paper. I think that would look really nice, especially with the cover that we have here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those pages out. We want to do them the same size that we cut these pages. So now that we have our end pages, we want to go ahead and glue them onto our text block. To adapt these end pages, I'm just going to take paper with some glue and I'm just going to apply a um, strip of glue to the end of this page. And I'm going to take this, my end page, and I'm just going to line it up with the other pages. Okay, now we're going to flip this over. And we're going to do the exact same thing on this side. Okay, so I have my two end pages glued on. The last thing I'm going to do to finish up this text block is to just take some paper just to reinforce the binding a little bit. I'm just going to be using some plain white paper, nothing fancy. I think it will work okay. At least I hope so. So I'm just going to cut it. I'm going to go ahead and attach that to our binding. This will just help reinforce it. I'm going to go ahead and put some heavy books and stuff on top of it just so it will dry flat and leave it there until it is fully dried and then our text block will be completely done. Okay so I finished adding these in things on. It is pretty dry now, dry enough for me to go ahead and add the cover. So we are going to put these two pieces together now and I am really 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 scared because this is where it could all go really good or go really bad. We're gonna go with the really good option, okay? I'm deciding what the best plan of attack would be. I'm going to start with um, this side. I'm just going to apply the glue to the cover. Okay, so how did I say to do this? To line it up that it's centered. Oh, oh. okay, that seems to work pretty well. Now let's, uh, so we're gonna do the other side. It looks pretty, pretty even. What do you guys think? Okay, I'm gonna close the book. Oh no, that's crooked, that's crooked. Crooked, that's crooked, that's crooked. Now take it off, take it off, take it off. Yes, yes. Is that straight? Okay, guys, I think this is the evenness it's gonna get. I am going to put it under some heavy, heavy books and just let it dry there for a little bit, okay? And then we'll make sure it all looks good and then this project will be done. I hope you guys enjoyed me making my own sketchbook. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more artsy and crafty videos. And I will see you guys later. Bye! Subscribe or I'll find your house. Thumbs up, like, and subscribe. <laughs>